everybody, if I could have a little bit of a hush down in the room. Um, right, good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Steve Connor. Uh, I run a company really close to here, which is like there, um, called Creative Concern. And we're a communications company that specializes in sustainability, social issues, making the world a better place and not being evil. Um, I'm also, uh, I wear a number of other hats. I'm a member of the Manchester Climate Change Partnership, uh, so passionate about our topic here today. And I'm also the Green Lead on um, the Greater Manchester Business Board, which once upon a time used to be called the Local Enterprise Partnership, but we've rebranded. Um, and one of our big programmes, which I'm going to mention in a minute, um, is Be Net Zero. Um, uh, and so this event is all part of contributing to our great mission, uh, which we call Be Net Zero. Um, so welcome this morning. Um, first of all, an advance warning, uh, I have got man flu, so I'd like a big sympathetic R. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, so basically, as well as just extracting sympathy, which is a classic speaker tactic, um, if you read the TED Talk, five things you should do, get sympathy early. Um, uh, it does mean that Sam uh, from Pro Manchester is instructed to jump on stage and take over from me if I descend into a spluttery coughing mess at any moment. But I have taken lots of drugs and just to dispel any worries, a COVID test and all is OK. Um, so uh, you're really welcome this morning. It's lovely to, to see you all here. I wanted to start with a couple of really important things before I crack on and, and set the scene for today. First of all, thank you to our sponsors. Apple Yard Lees are our headline sponsor. Also Brentwood SciTech. Um, and we're here in a lovely Bromwell building, uh, Spencer Churchill, Manchester Metropolitan University, Siemens and Business Cloud are our media partner. Um, so thank you very much to all of those sponsors that have made this possible. And as ever, um, because they don't put it in my briefing notes, thank you to Pro Manchester and the amazing team that you've got, Sam, for, for putting this together. It's really brilliant. Um, first of all, there is an alarm, uh, a fire alarm uh, at 11 o'clock. It is a test. So uh, we don't have to run out into the rain. That's quite good news, isn't it? Particularly for keeping the conference time. Um, so at 11 o'clock, be warned, we might hear uh, a significant amount of noise, but it, I'm sure it will only be brief, won't it, Izzy? Um, so, so we've got um, a packed agenda today. We've got a number of coffee breaks for you to carry on networking because these events are always so valuable for all that. Um, uh, and we've got some really great panel discussions. And we're going to start in a moment with our first panel, who I'll invite up in a sec. Um, to actually chat through where Manchester is actually up to uh, in terms of green technology, getting to net zero uh, and facing the climate crisis. But I just want to say a few words to, to open us up, really. Um, and I thought there's nothing better than starting with um, Tony Wilson. Now, looking at the crowd, you're all quite young. So hands up anybody who doesn't know who Tony Wilson is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was <laughs> there was a, a, a station called Granada, and there was a, a club called the Hacienda, and there was a record label called Factor Records. And Tony Wilson uh, helped to found this. Um, I'm going to have to increasingly do potted histories before using references like Tony Wilson. Um, Tony Wilson was this incredible maverick, right? He's an entrepreneur. He claimed he was a sort of Marxist entrepreneur, capitalist conservative weird um atheist catholic um anyway so tony um tony was a massive uh, advocate of manchester and the north of england um and he um and he said this amazing thing he used to he said it in many different ways but here's one of the quotes he said there have only been two real revolutions for humankind um the first happened about twelve thousand years ago uh, when people gave up hunting and gathering and settled down as farmers that was mainly in North Africa, Mesopotamia, a little bit in Egypt. Uh, and the second was in the 18th and 19th centuries when we became industrial beings. And as he always said, the second great human revolution started here in Manchester. Uh, he said its mouthpiece was Liverpool, because that's where we dispatched all of Manchester's goods to the world. Uh, its muscle was Lancashire, but the heart was Manchester. Um, uh, and I always think that sort of second industrial revolution is an excellent starting place to talk about. Um, uh, to talk about clean tech, green tech, and net zero. So uh, I'm going to actually um, object you to a huge amount of complicated slides, and I'm not. This is just one. This is all there is. Um, so um, it's actually slightly more legible on these little screens at the side, but if you chart um, the course of human innovation and technology, Manchester has pretty much crested every single wave 
of human innovation, which is so interesting when you think about it. So first in the 18th century, there was iron, water power, textiles, free trade movement. Um, and that was the time when we invented the flying shuttle. Um, uh, we've uh, invented the first steam driven textile mill. And so that very first wave of industrialization, people peg it usually to about 1775. Uh, we were right at the heart of it. Uh, and next came um, steam, rail, um, steel, cotton in the 19th century. And that was really the heart of the Industrial Revolution. And that's when we really got into our stride. Um, and we also had some politics in the mix as well. So that was the first passenger railway journey started from Manchester to Liverpool. Um, tragically, the journey time is about the same today. Um, and um, um, But some massively important um, political uh, innovations happened then as well. Women campaigned for suffrage, the court movement launched. Uh, Marx met Engels um, uh, here in Manchester and they crafted the Communist Party Manifesto. So a huge amount of world shaping going on in the 19th century and we were at the crest of that wave. Um, and then you sort of get the, the, uh, the century tips into the 20th century and there's a huge amount going on. So as electricity, chemicals and combustion were kind of really critical at the start of the 20th century, we had a huge part to play in all of them. Uh, split the atom, Rolls met Royce at the Midland Hotel. Um, we uh, designed Britain's first um, airplane um, here in Manchester at the Aero Works, which is just behind Piccadilly. Um, so we had all these massive roles to play in, in massive innovation. And then throughout the 20th century, we went from aviation uh, to space and electronics. Um, there's the hilarious story of Bernard Lovell um, out at the Botanical Bar Gardens for uh, Manchester University. I heard this bleep in space. He'd set up this little radio telescope. I heard this bleep in space and said, I think there's something um, orbiting around the Earth. <laughs> and, and next thing he knows, the American generals have got him a rail, on a railway siding somewhere near Old Lee Edge going, are you a spy for the Russians? Because he'd heard Sputnik. And what's amazing is that the first wave of radio telescopes at Dodgeball Bank were actually co-funded with the American government as a result of that meeting. And the space race began here in Manchester. Maybe that's overclaiming a little bit. But anyway, um, uh, computing, obviously biotechnology, we had a huge role to play in all these waves of innovation. Um, and, and basically played a key part in what would come to be known as the Anthropocene. And for those of you who haven't encountered the term, the Anthropocene is what uh, geologists, chemists, histori his historians of, of innovation describe the period of human history we're in now where we are the dominant force. We're no longer in the Holocene, we're in the Anthropocene where humankind is the major force shaping the future of our planet. And that's where we are now. Uh, we also helped to invent dance music, but we'll do that on another day. Um, so that key um, starting point, the Industrial Revolution, where humankind began working with machines, was powered by Manchester. Um, but critically, as set in the tone for today, it also created the climate crisis. Um, and so, um, and also it drew massively on the planet's finite natural resources, which have resulted in a biodiversity crisis as well. So um, we have both a, a fascinating legacy and track record and momentum of innovation, but we also have a responsibility as a city region but the kind of crap we unloaded on the world as a result of the Industrial Revolution. So uh, we kind of created the Anthropocene um, and, and we have to help the world chart our course safely through it. Uh, and as I always say, if, uh, if, if the first originally modern industrial city can actually become a sustainable, circular, green, clean city, then nowhere else in the world can say it's too difficult. If we can do it, anybody can, basically. So the green technology is the new revolution, third or fourth, depending on which theoretician you talk about, talk to. And um, hang on, I'm just checking I'm doing right. Um, and our role isn't just the place uh, as the place that today is discovered. Graphene, for example, um, uh, leaders in the next wave, which we've got the sixth wave of innovation down here, green chemistry, uh, advanced material science, um, renewables research, including fuel cells, that I'm sure we'll hear about later. Um, we've got a huge role in today's wave of innovation, more than I think we always, we often find out about. One thing I'm uh, I'm really grateful to Pro Manchester for is, you know, you're dedicated to this green tech conference, aren't you, Sam? And, uh, and it, this really is probably one of the three most important industrial strategies for this city region. It really, really is pivotal. Um, and so um, there used to be this thing called the Manchester model um, that both economists and industrialists across the world would see as being how to be really rapacious and <laughs> trample over the working class, make a load of cash. And um, the new Manchester model, I think, is really exciting. We're becoming known for it. Um, 
So last year we were named one of 98 global cities to make it onto the carbon disclosure projects, a list of cities. Um, that they see very objectively as being uh, having set a really good target on net zero, having a plan in place, working across the whole of the city to make change happen. So we got onto that A list of global cities that are taking this seriously. We're the first city region in the UK to set a science based target for climate. Um, and so we're leading there. And as you'll hear throughout the course of today, um, we're pioneering on zero carbon buildings, energy innovation, smart cities, green finance and sustainable food. So there's a huge amount of textiles and fashion actually doing loads in as well. So um, we are at that edge, but we're still not going fast enough. So we want to be a city region known for green business. Um, uh, and we want to make events like this part of that, um, really critical to it. Um, so I mentioned earlier, I'm on the board of the Greater Manchester Business Board, and we've got this program called Be Net Zero. Um, and that is our plan to make Greater Manchester the easiest place in the UK to get to net zero as a business. Um, so what we want to do is just make sure that if you are one of the 125,000 businesses that are registered in Greater Manchester, um, you have absolutely, some would say no excuse, um, but a seamless supported journey to net zero, um, to get to net zero. So we've um, got all of the key organisations together um, to create this Be Net Zero partnership. We've got, I'm going to list them because they're all amazing people, uh, the Combined Authority, uh, Green Economy and the Growth Hub, Electricity Northwest, who we'll hear from today, Mike. Um, business in the Community, Transport of Greater Manchester, the Energy Innovation Agency, Dan, we'll hear from you in a minute. Um, the Manchester Climate Change Agency, the Chamber of Commerce, the SME Climate Hub, which is Bayes, um, Siemens, Mott McDonald's, NatWest, and of course, Prime Manchester. So we've got this amazing partnership we've called together under B Net Zero. Um, um, we're basically tackling a number of different um, priorities. So we're looking at um, energy efficiency is priority number one. At the moment, that's um, really critical because even though yesterday's budget, which I think we'll come into uh, the discussion today in a couple of ways, really, because there's a lot of important stuff in there for net zero. Um, uh, the price support for businesses uh, won't necessarily succeed, continue uh, as it will for homeowners. And so it's critical that we tackle energy efficiency. And um, one thing we know is that most businesses, even now, could probably save about 30% on their energy bills by tackling energy efficiency properly. Um, we're also talk, looking at um, sustainable finance, renewables, um, green travel, um, and we're really keen on getting um, businesses into uh, the growth company's cohort on Journey to Net Zero. Um, and Amy, you can talk more about that when you're up here on stage several times today. Um, the, uh, so um, one thing that's exciting about taking these businesses on this journey is I think that climate, tackling the climate crisis could be a key to productivity apart from anything else. So um, you'll have heard it. Everybody talks about the productivity crisis and we're not as productive as a nation. Um, um, energy bills um, are cited by about three quarters of business leaders as being something that really hits them hard. And so I think one way to get more productivity into our economy is actually to you know tackle nature the climate and environment more seriously amazing sort of double win um uh but also getting to net zero um is a huge marketplace uh, and that's why i think all of you in this room today um a you're at the right place unless you're at the wrong conference in which case i apologize and yeah you might want to go to the other one down the corridor <laughs> but um 100 billion of investment is forecast um in the global economy to get us to net zero and that's a market we want to dominate um, in Greater Manchester. I love the fact that Greater Manchester has always been a socialist city that loves capitalism. Kind of a bit of a head when you think about it. But we, we want to be in this market in a really big way. Um, and, and it's also forecast to create 480,000 new jobs. That's even without taking into account the jobs that will transition into the net zero space. So it, it is a very, very dynamic market. And, and if we don't do it, um, the next generation of business leaders, which actually is you, uh, not me, um, it's you guys, um, you'll see us as the dinosaurs that didn't even see the meteorite coming. You know, so I said, what were they doing? They completely missed the, the, the climate change revolution. Um, they were too busy pursuing crazy, crazy schemes like big logistics sheds and nuclear power. Um, the, so if we don't do it, we'll be dinosaurs. Um, and what's really interesting, if you look at, there's a global thing called the Edelman Trust Barometer that looks at how globally, who do we trust in this world, particularly in the face of the climate crisis, who do we listen to? 
Um, and one fascinating fact they come out of that is that 79% of students leaving college today across the whole world, not just the UK, say that a company's social and environmental track record is critical in choosing their job, 79%. That's an extraordinary figure. And it means this is a hygiene factor for people like you, um, talented people coming into work, full of passion uh, and drive and energy, uh, and you want to know that you're working for purpose and the right thing. And that's why we have to be in this space. So uh, one of the good news, um, courtesy of Electricity Northwest, the survey of our businesses last year, um, six out of 10 businesses in Greater Manchester say they've either got a plan to get to net zero or they're busy developing one. So that's good news. It means that we're not all blinkered and we're not blind to this as being a challenge. But we need to go farther and faster um, because we can't cock this up. Uh, we've literally bet the house, or in this case, the planet, on fixing the climate crisis. So we need to change, be brave, work together collaboratively, uh, which is why I'm so proud of the BNet Zero partners all coming together and working so brilliant together. And, and the people in this room are the cutting edge of it. So you'll take away from today all the innovations, all the approaches, all the things that are the mega trends driving forward, uh, not just Greater Manchester, but the global economy. Um, so no pressure on all of you then. Um, and so I find, find, <laughs> just realised this is a crap way to finish, Sam. It's going to be, because I started with Tony Wilson and pretty much nobody knew who he was. I'm quietly confident, um, unless you've uh, listened to the Triple X remix of his last album before he died, um, the Double X remix, XX remix of it, the last album. I wanted to finish with Gil Scott Heron, um, um, which, uh, you know, to misquote him badly, this revolution will be decarbonised and will be part of it. Nobody knows who Gil Scott Heron is. Sam, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> like Tony Wilson, Factor Records. It's, I'm not well either. I didn't deliver it confidently either, Mike, frankly. I, I'd like to apologise for all of you for my fluttering man flu performance. Um, but, um, but yeah, so this revolution will be a key part of, uh, and we're going to make it work. So thank you very much for being here today. Um, it's really exciting. We've got a huge amount to learn. And before uh, we move on, I'm just going to click this move on to our first panel. So if I could ask our panel members to come up and we'll start